Hello and welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial. In this video we're going to create and actually start a new series for chess pieces. Uh, and yeah, so we're just going to start by creating this pawn. That's what we're going to do in this video and in the rest of them we'll just create more and more pieces. Uh, and then eventually the chess board. So let's go ahead and get started. It's going to look something like this when we're done. Uh, this is the file that we're going to end up creating and open up a brand new Blender file uh, and get rid of the cube that you have. We're going to do things a little bit differently as if you've seen a lot of my tutorials I start with that with the cubes and even suggest that you should use them most of the time. This is <clears throat> sorry about that. This is a kind of a little bit of a, a different occasion. We're going to start by adding shift A add mesh add a cylinder and uh, it's because we're going to kind of create this as a, a lathe type principle where if we just use a lot of scaling so I'm going to go into wireframe if we use a lot of scaling it's almost as if we're kind of like I don't know if you ever used a lathe before but whatever we create it's going to go around in a circle so if I want to move this piece in it moves them all in so we're kind of simulating that process uh, I'm just going to open up this file one right here just so that if I need to pull it up I can and show some reference pictures for it. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, start doing this. So this is going to be the base of our thing. Make sure you're in wireframe. You're going to probably want to be. So hit Z and if you hold down Z you can just click on wireframe and you can go there. So this is going to be this base part right down here. Uh, essentially we just want it to be something like this and we're just going to quickly outline it and then go back through and uh, refine things so if we just go base to the next point and then we hit E to extrude and right click it'll snap it in the same spot hit S to make it a little bit smaller and you can see the edge of it right here we don't want to go way in but that's probably good enough hit E to move it up and S to scale it so now we're just creating this little bowl uh, and you might think like we don't want to be just jagged uh, you can already turn on subdivision surface but we're just going to after we're done uh, there's there is a little bit of a reason why we're doing that but it's not detrimental you could do it now uh, but yeah just stay in front view and then kind of follow this pattern because uh, you can select these things pretty easily and move it all around uh, now I'm just going to hit E again, scale it with the S, E, scale, E, scale, E, S E, right click, scale. It, if you right click it just does that same size there again. E, click, E, move up, scale, and E, let's go up here S to scale E and let's make it something like right there for now so now we have this basic outline and you can see it has the rough shape of of this right uh, let's just go ahead and throw on our modifier now our subdivision surface modifier now it's beginning to look even more like it if we pull that over uh, we're getting Let's see if I can, oops, that's not what I wanted. There we go. So if we do that, we're getting closer. Uh, maybe if we right click on here, we're getting even closer again. Uh, but there's some things we're losing detail. If we were, the more we do this, we kind of like lose the detail that we actually do want. Uh, so let's go back into edit mode here. Uh, you can either do this in wireframe or you can do this in solid view. I'll start and I'll probably switch so I can give you better views if I need to. Uh, so hit control R to loop cut and I'm going to select uh, this line and move it down and then click and then control R click and now if we go back out you can see that we're beginning to get the definition of those curves that we wanted in the first place. Uh, let's do that here to bring that down a little bit. 
I'm going to add one just in the middle there. I'm, you could add one here and drag for this side and for that side. Uh, it's small enough that I'm going to put one in the middle. Go back into front view. I'm going to hit Control R. And actually, I don't want one there. Uh, this is more bulbous. We don't want this to. We could. You could, if you wanted to, make that sharp. Uh, however, I don't like it, so uh, I'm just going to take that off, just to kind of keep with our same form that we were going for before. Uh, we do, however, want to control R. Um, whoops, I was on the picture still, and click and go up here. Now, also, fun fact, so like if you mess up and you put it all the way down here, and you realize you just want to move it up here, you can actually double tap G. So if G once, we'll move it. G again, we'll slide it on the uh, line. So that's just a helpful tip. Uh, so we want that to be kind of a more, um, a little bit more harsher there, but we, I don't think we want, I don't think we should go for like that harsh. Um, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like that's that was feeling good right there. However, I think we want this one to be a little bit more defined. Uh, a lot of this can be your own preference. If you're looking at, I also, another tip, so I created this, I'm looking at it now, but I also created, when I created that first one, I used images off the internet just as a reference, so I'm using like this right here and you can just type in chess pieces and they pop up. So that's kind of what the reference that I am using is doing. So I'm just moving uh, let's, I don't want one there. I thought that, I didn't see that line there. We're probably going to want one right here though on both sides of that just to give it that line. Uh, there is a little bit of a line there. And then this was really curved in the image, and I, I like that. I actually did, except for all the way up here. That's harsh. Um, and then this, we also can put one here and slide it in. And do the same thing for the outside. Now we can go back into the front view. Control R, drag it down. Control R, drag it up. Control R and drag it down. So now we just made a harsh edge here, here, and here. And it looks like that now. And we will want one definitely right here. And bring it all the way down. Now that's pretty good there. Now you might say this is, doesn't look like a sphere anymore, and you're exactly right. It well never really did, actually. Uh, we're going to add a loop cut here, just right here, down, maybe a little bit lower, uh, like maybe a third of the way from the middle. And I'm just going to hit S and scale it out. And I'm going to select this and, oh, that's weird. Oh, it's because I am not in wireframe. That's why. That's what I want to do. So if you're in wireframe, you can select through objects. If you're in solid, it will stop and will only select what you can see. So that's why I was doing that. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing up here at the top. Something like that. Make it a little bit smaller. Move it down. And then just keep playing with those for that. Yeah, so it's looking pretty circular now. Uh, however, if we go into solid view, uh, or if we go when we're in edit mode, we can see this is one big, like, just a normal plane. It's called an n-gon, and those are actually really bad sometimes when you render things. Uh, you don't have to initially change this. It you probably won't have anything. Uh, however, just to keep geometry a little bit cleaner, uh, we're going to have to get, generally you want to get four four sided objects like this. It's called a quad. Uh, and second, 
After that, if you can't get a quad, you want tries. The worst thing you want is an end gun. It's for shading purposes and the way light reacts with it. Uh, it's easier for computers to calculate the quads. So to fix this, uh, we're just going to hit E. Long story short, yeah, that wasn't supposed to get super complicated there, but long story short is we're going to hit E, right click S, and uh, you can right click right here in the middle and click merge vertices at center. And now we just turn these into tries, which are worse than quads, and you can go in here and you can actually probably make these quads all the way in here. Uh, however, I don't think that we need to spend our time on that. Uh, I just realized this looks like a really big bottom here, so I'm going to fix it and maybe pull these up a little bit. Maybe that. There we go. Yeah, I think I like that. So I hope that this has helped you a little bit um, in some of these uh, tricks and tips of modeling and uh, thanks for watching uh, stay tuned for more chess piece tutorials we'll go over the rest of the pieces in the near future and uh, see you next time on blender know-how